See how many people have come together to reclaim Danforth as a safe space for families and children. I mean, it's, it's amazing, really. Danielle Kane is one of the 13 people who were injured almost exactly a year ago when a man opened fire on a busy Toronto street. Two people, Reese Fallon and Juliana Kozis, were killed. Now, ahead of the anniversary tomorrow, a ceremony was held today to honour all those who were affected. And that shooting on the Danforth changed a lot of lives. Kane and her partners among them. They were out at a restaurant celebrating a friend's birthday in that crowded neighbourhood when the unthinkable happened. A summer night broken into cold pieces. The shooting on Toronto's Danforth Avenue left the city shocked with few answers and hope scribbled on the walls. But months later, two survivors would show us the meaning of strength. I felt the shot. Immediately, my, my legs like buckled under me. Danielle Kane was permanently paralyzed from the waist down when a bullet hit her spine. You'd expect anger, but she told us the shooter deserved better. I, I, I feel sorry for them. I wish that perhaps that they had the help that they needed. We were right here on a patio. Her partner, Jerry Pinkson, was also there that night. Having worked as an emergency nurse, he rushed out to try and help others. The months since have been up and down for both of them. Between managing Danielle's constant pain and their mental health, there's the added challenges of moving on and moving out, too. I caught up with them earlier this week at their soon-to-be old home in Toronto's West End. Thanks so much for making the time. How, how are you guys doing? Uh, we're, we're okay. We're, you know, we're hanging in there. It's been, um, as you can imagine, a really tough year. Um, and uh, I guess for me, I'm really surprised about how long the rehabilitation process is taking, especially regarding uh, like the chronic pain that I'm experiencing. And we knew that the disability that her paraplegia, she should never walk again was an issue. And we knew we were like fighting and preparing for that possibility, that future. But then if you put this whole new element of pain, it's been a bit difficult because, you know, you see your partner struggling with this new disability and then she has another disability of pain, which is pretty yeah. occupying. Can you, can you describe what that feels like? Well, um, it's an intense uh, pins and needles feeling from my waist uh, down. So it's, it's quite all-encompassing. It's almost like you feel like half your body is trapped in, in concrete or something. Are, are you able to take, I mean, medication for that? I, mean, um, I am taking like many different kinds of medication for that, especially um, Lyrica. Uh, the only issue is that it, it kind of interacts with some of my other medications and it can make me groggy. So um, it's kind of finding the balance uh, between that because it's, it's almost as though like I can't have, you know, clarity of thought and pain relief at the same time. Can, can you walk me a bit through th th those little ways that life is different now? Well, um, you know, in the past, I would, you wake up in the morning, you get out of bed and then you start your day. I can't get out of bed right away. Like, I need to take time um, for my pain medication to kick in. When I do finally get a day where I, I, my pain is controlled and we, we go out, um, it's hard for me, honestly, it's hard for me to see all, all the other able-bodied young people um, and, and just seeing how freely they move through the world, you know? And um, it just... It reminds me of like what was taken away from me, and um, uh, it's hard when I have those thoughts. I kind of need to like go go home um, and into a, you know a private space where I can kind of digest those thoughts and I guess focus on the fact that I'm so lucky to be here still. I know all of all of your attention is focused on Danielle. But I'm curious to know what the, I mean, what the hardest part of it for you has been. The hardest part for me has been uh, just seeing someone you love suffer so much. It's hard to me, hard for me to be 
there and not able to help, especially when pain is an element to her like suffering. It's it gets to a point where I try to do my best, but then I have to like just sit with that, and we have to sit in that in that reality for a moment and be and just try to do whatever kind of thing we can do to have some kind of respite. Right. And so, I mean, let me let me ask you the same question I asked you at the beginning, which is, how are you doing? Um, I'm doing okay. I'm like it's. Um, I can't change the situation that we're in. Uh, I can only make try to make things better for myself and for my partner, for Danielle. So, uh, so I can't dwell on trying to say the what if and how to change things. I just try to focus on what I can change a day, in a week, or in a month. I don't mind sacrificing my own well-being for a short term just to help her through this period because. I know when the tables are turned, she's there sacrificing herself for me. When you hear, I mean, Jerry saying some of those things, what goes through your head? I mean, I know, he, sorry, I guess I just need a, um, a moment. I guess, uh, yeah, because I mean, since day to day, he's helping me so much. Um, I feel guilty. I feel like um, I, I hate, I feel like a burden sometimes. And uh, he does such a good job of, you know, letting me know that that's not the case whatsoever. And, um, you know, I can't wait until I'm better so I can, you know, contribute to, contribute a lot, like more to our lives. and. Um, and to this team that we have. Have you, have you been back to the Danforth? Have you, have it was St. Patrick's Day. We, uh, we were kind of partying with friends at a pub. Like, it was a good pain day. And, um, you know, we had a few drinks at a pub and we were going home dropping people off. Uh, and we had just happened to pass by the Danforth just to see again um, how close uh, the shooter was to me, like just how, how narrow that street is. Uh, I'm again reminded of, you know, how lucky I am to be alive because uh, I couldn't have been closer, could not have been closer to him, so. That was the only time you've been back? That was the only time I've been back. And uh, yeah, so it was, it, it was surprising to me. I thought I might feel afraid, but um, instead I feel stronger. I'm like, you know, that's, I came from there and I was broken and I was like bleeding and broken there. And now I've been put together and I'm on the, the path to recovery, so. I, I did want to ask you about something that, that you had said, actually, um, the last time we spoke to you, and it was about the shooter. And right. it, it was something that, that actually really struck me uh, right. quite a bit. You said that you felt sorry for him. Oh, I still do. Um, it's obvious to me that, you know, he was suffering. Faisal clearly had uh, had these issues for a long time and he fell through the cracks you know he was supposed to follow up with a forensic psychologist and that never happened um, I think our system needs to be improved I think that individuals like this should have you know caseworkers or someone that they need to check in with regularly whatever it is that they need to stay on track and not be so isolated as he was. A lot of people in your position might not feel the way you feel, which is yeah. the sense of, of empathy, of, of sympathy. I've been in really dark places. If, if you're alone and you don't have anyone to kind of pull you out of that negative spiral, like how far you can go down there. I under, cause I've been down there. I don't, I haven't been as far down as he has clearly, but, um, we all need community. Like we all need people to love us. And um, I know it's hard for other people to believe, but like, like we need to bring in people like Faisal and love, love them. Where do you get that strength from? 
an obstacle like this one maybe as it is huge it's it is a a big thing to deal with but i do think that i've had um a lot of other adversity in life that i've had to overcome uh so that this isn't i don't know i guess together with jerry it doesn't seem so insurmountable well you to that point you have support here. i do T tell me about this guy he's amazing i mean i don't i keep <laughs> Even at the beginning, when we first started dating, I was like, where'd you come from? You know, he's just so, he's so kind and, and um, so generous uh, and, and just loyal to a fault. And um, Loyal to a fault. <laughs> yeah. Why, why'd that make you a snicker? Uh, because it's like, uh, you think about loyalty, is not, there's no fault in being really loyal and stuff. It's something that just like feels right. And like when you feel you're committed to a partner and you love a partner, it's just like what you do for them no matter what, you know. So. Going back to school. Right. Going back into nursing. Mm -hmm. I mean, tell me about that. Is, is that, that's on the horizon? Um, I, would, I would like to. And uh, the reason I decided to embark on the nursing program was because I wanted to help people with mental health issues. Um, and I thought that through nursing, that would be a great way to do it. Uh, one last thing, I, I know you guys have a busy time ahead, right? In the, in the coming weeks, coming months? Right. Yeah. Big move. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, moving to Oshawa. So exactly. Near, near Daniel's Nursing School. That was our main driving force to move out there. Yes. Uh, so we're like, we're excited to move into a new community. We talk about the importance of community and we really want to get into a new new home, accessible home for Danielle. Yes. And then get into the community and, 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 and put our roots down. That's what we're looking forward to. And, and I mean, you know, there's the, there's the practical side of things and, and I just want to know emotionally. I mean, emotionally. Where, where's your head at? Um, emotionally, <laughs> I mean, where my head is at changes like hour to hour, you know, but uh, what I'm turning to a lot is uh, mindfulness and meditation. Um, I've been reading uh, Peace in Every Step, and it, it basically is about, you know, finding joy in the small things. There's so many things that we can be grateful for um, if we just, you know, turned our attention to it. It's, it's just about turning your attention to those um, little joy, joyful uh, moments in your day and all those good elements in your life. Well, that's a beautiful thought to end on. Uh, yeah. Danielle, uh, I and, and everyone watching and Jerry wish you all the best. Thanks so much for taking Thank the time. You. Thank you. It was a, a wonderfully eye-opening experience to speak with those two. Now, of, of course, you know, one of the big questions in all of this is why. Why did Faisal Hussein go on this shooting spree in the first place? Toronto police have admitted we may never know the answer to that. Last month, they put out a report detailing Hussein's years-long battle with mental health and behavioral problems, including assessments done as early as grade four that showed intellectual deficiencies and a fascination with death and violence. When police raided the apartment he shared with his parents after the shooting, they found drugs and ammunition, but no proof that he had been radicalized or that anyone else was involved.